Hey everyone, welcome back to Impossible Color. Special thanks to the Photography and Lightroom Facebook group members that joined recently. Today I'll be showing a complete night portrait makeover in Adobe Camera Raw and Photoshop. Start things off in Camera Raw. I always set my camera profile to camera neutral, the same way that I shoot in my camera, so I don't get any surprises. Then I'll just have a look at my white balance adjustment using the white balance picker tool. One little trick, sometimes you can use the white of the eye. Didn't quite work this time, but sometimes it's a good trick. Let's go with the auto, gets it pretty close, and just do a little adjustment on the temperature. And now for the exposure. I had to shoot in a mid-range here because the lights were pretty bright in the background, but it was at night and it was pretty dark. and It was all natural light. So if we bump up the shadows and the whites, bring down the highlights so that things are blown out in the background. But get the blacks down so we still have some deep areas in the image. Usually I go back and forth quite a bit here and try to get that perfect mix. It's looking pretty close. Okay, now on to our hue, saturation, and luminance adjustments. I always like my reds a little bit pinkier. I find it looks better for the for the cheeks and the lips. I really want this shirt to match the background and then have a nice complementary with the green foliage in the background. Creates a nice relationship there. Try to get in the habit of working with your image holistically. So if you change one thing, don't be afraid to go back and adjust something else. And now for the luminance, the darkness and lightness per color channel. I'm going to brighten up the values that are in the skin to bring the subject forward. And we'll set the green back a little bit to put it a little further back in the background. And here I'm going to do some lens corrections. And you see that chromatic aberration, that green fringe around there? If you go down to your green amount here in the defringe, if you set the right range, you can just eliminate that really easily. That looks much better. I'm going to take a snapshot of this so we can easily see it before and after. Call that one edited. And we'll go back to the original camera raw defaults from the camera and just call that one original. And we can see we've come a long way, but we still have Photoshop to work in. Okay, I'll just see a few little adjustments here that I want to make to the colors again. They're not quite match up as, as as much as I'd like. And done. Okay, let's crop this up. I think a little bit a tighter image will draw a lot more attention to the subject. I do want to include some of the lights and excitement of the background, but I don't want it to dominate the image. Okay, now we're in Photoshop for the second part of the video. First thing we're going to do is work on some skin. We're going to duplicate the background twice. I'm going to do some frequency separation. Sounds scary, but it's really not that difficult. I'm just going to blur the bottom layer so the skin is kind of smooth. And on the top layer, we'll go to Image, Apply Image. And we're going to apply it to the layer below it, the background copy. And subtract. I want you to use the values of 2 and 128. And we'll set the 
layer blending mode to linear light. So right now you shouldn't see any difference. Just going to throw those in a group so it'll be easy to see before and after. And we didn't do anything yet, so don't worry about that. Now if you click on the lower one, the objective here is to kind of smooth out the broad transitions of light and shadow. I guess you could sort of think of this a bit like you're contouring your makeup or perhaps applying a, a foundation to smooth it out. And once we get these broad strokes done with the lower layer, we'll be doing the fine edits with the higher layer. So the higher layer will be the little uh, bits of imperfections in the skin, like little blemishes and scars and that kind of thing. So you can slowly see the skin taking shape here. The objective is definitely not to change the appearance of your subject so that they're not recognizable. It's, it's more just to work with those temporary differences in light and slight temporary imperfections in the skin. I darken the eyebrows in a little bit here so they look more solid. Maybe they lost a little bit with the light that we had. And before and after. It's important not to eliminate the shadow that's underneath the eye. That's very natural and you see a lot of artists that will get rid of that and it ends up looking very plastic. It's okay to get some of the shadow that's below the round of the eye, but definitely don't want to delete the rest of it. So on the higher layer here, you can see I'm working through some stray hairs, just little bumps in the skin, a few little blemishes, perfecting the lips. Tiny little spots. There's a stubborn stray hair that won't go away. Any little flecks of light in the hair can be a bit distracting. So you can get rid of those as well. Good idea to zoom in and out, get different perspectives on the image. Don't completely eliminate all the stray hairs that look very unnatural. Just try to reduce it so the uh, silhouette looks nicely managed. Very easy to get rid of little bits of lint. Any pilling on your fabric. That's looking much better. I'm going to do a little level adjustment with a duplicate of the layer. And we're going to use this level adjustment to whiten the eyes and a little bit of the lips. Now you can see I'm doing this for the full layer, but don't worry, we're going to do a layer mask so it only shows in the area that we want. So just look at the eyes specifically right now. Okay, that looks a lot brighter. And now if we make a layer mask and fill it black, this is going to hide everything. And wherever we use the the brush tool to paint it back in white will reveal the area that we want to see. So it's going to look extremely bright starting off here, but it's just 
makes it a little bit easier as you're working with it and we'll turn down the opacity a little bit later. So now I'm adding some gloss to the lips. Let's make those shine a little bit more. With the with the dark lighting in this environment we we did get shadows in the eyes and the lips did sort of fade out a bit so this makes a big difference. And obviously really exaggerated there but we're going to set it to uh, the lighting blending mode and turn the, the opacity way down. So just want a little bit of a subtle pop. And it makes the face a little bit more engaging. And I'm going to do a slight dodge in the shine of the eye. Just to give that a little bit more sparkle. I didn't use a flash for the image, so this is important to get a little bit of a catch light. And before and after that change. I'm going to make another duplicate. And we're going to do a high pass filter on this, and this can help sharpen. First thing you need to do is desaturate the layer and then go to filter other high pass. And I've been working with this method for quite some time. So I'm just used to it usually being around between four and five, but it's up to you and the particular image, how strong you want this to be. And you want to set the blending uh, layer mode to overlay. It's probably a bit subtle for what you see in, in the video there, but it does make a big difference. I'm going to make a layer mask there you see in black because we want to isolate the sharpening just to the areas that matter. Don't want to sharpen all the skin and the background and everywhere else that's not important. If you pick the, click on the, backs, uh, the backslash button on your keyboard, that's what gives you the red overview that you see makes it a little bit easier to see where you're painting. So here I'm going to isolate the lips, a little bit of the nose, uh, the eyes, eyebrows, most of the hair, and let these be sharp and shiny while the skin can stay back and remain smooth. A lot of the times the sharpness of an image is relative to the other objects that are in the scene. Before and after. Okay, that looks really good to me. There's lots of different sharpening methods that I use. This is just uh, one of the many. And I'm going to blur that layer mask just so it smooths in a little bit more. I don't want any abrupt transitions in sharpness. That's a dead giveaway that you worked an image a little bit too much. Just merge those layers together. And here's a before and after of all of our changes. Thanks for checking out Impossible Color. If you found this helpful, please click the little like button. And if you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, just click the little green subscribe button below. Please share your ideas for new videos in the comments below. I'd be happy to check them out. See you next week with more exciting videos.